Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I appreciate you stopping by. So uh, I thought I'd make a video to show you how to connect a DX80 radio network to a Turk TX700 HMI. And we're gonna do that with the help of our uh, DX80 multi-hop radios. And I have just a, an input connected to it as well as an output. And uh, this first video is going to be just the codices portion of it and just creating tags and setting up the communication for uh, making the TX HMI a Modbus slave over RS45. So the first thing to do is to make sure you get your wiring right on the um, on the HMI side. So there's a very tiny connector. You can't see it that well, but it, it's tiny little pins, so I recommend the right cable uh, wire for that. It does get a little uh, crowded, so I use these little lever nuts to help with all of that. You do have to wire this kind of funny, so here's, a, here's an image that I got from Turk on how to wire it. Because it is, it, it, RS45 is two wire, um, but the way it's wired is four wired. Okay, so this is how the wiring goes from the uh, HMI. So pretty much you have to connect all your positives together and then all your negatives together. So this can be RS232, 422, and 485. So uh, the, the pins there are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in that order. So you do have to connect all of your positives together and all your negatives together. And then your positive goes to the positive side of my radio. In this case, it is the white wire. And um, the, you can't really see this, but and the black wire goes to all my negative connections. So that's the only kind of, um, you know, little gotcha with setting this up. You just gotta make sure that you, you, you do have everything set up correctly. So anyway, the manual shows you and then this very helpful drawing that I got will also help clarify that. So anyway, getting back to starting up the CODIS's project. So let's go ahead and start new project. We're going to do a standard project. We're going to call this Untitled 2. I'm going to save this to... Okay. Untitled 1. That works. Okay. So first thing we're going to want to do is connect to the HMI, make sure that we have connection to it. So the nice thing about um, Kirk is that, let me pick the right one, can't talk and pick things at the same time. Okay, um, we do have all these options for programming. I'm going to go with ladder logic for now, okay? And as it pulls that up, I'm using Service Pack 14 because that's what my that's the firmware that matches up with my HMI. Okay, so if we go ahead and go on the, the project tree here, click double click on device, it should open up the settings. So let's go ahead and scan the network, see if it finds it. Well, actually, let me show you, you might need to, this is your first time opening it up, you might need to, where is it, under tools? Package manner, Manager. So you want to go into Package Manager and install the package that you have for this device. And it should have been downloaded with your um, with your Codices download. So if it's your first time downloading, you know it, there's a little process for your first time. So you can go ahead and look for that package that got downloaded and just select it and install and close this out. And after that, you should be fine. Um, yeah. Okie doke. So go ahead and scan your network. It quickly found my HMI. Click OK. So you notice the green dots. That means it's online. So we're good there. Um, as I go through my settings here, there's a few things that we need to check. Very important under PLC settings, we got to make sure that enable to is always in bus cycle. 
So that, that parameter is very important so that you get continuous data. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll never see it working. Uh, so that's on and users, access rights, symbol rights. Okay, uh, since we are using a serial com port, I need you to, you're gonna need to um, select the com port. Right now it's not in use, so we need to tell it to be in use. We're gonna tell it it's gonna be used for 485. And I think that's it here with the device settings. So we are ready to add a device to our project tree. So we're gonna first add the Modbus plane, the Modbus connection. So if we click on one of these, where is it? Is it device, add device. And we click on field buses. We've got a lot of options here. Modbus is where we're looking. Um, we're adding the serial port. Okay, so click add device. Close that out. And now that we have this installed, now we can add our master and our slaves. So let's double click on Modbus, home port, and let us select our Modbus settings. So for our better radios, those are by default on the 19200 baud rate. Parity is none, data bits is eight, and stop bits is one. And then on our serial port parameters, I think this is it. Yeah, this is it. That's all I have to do there. So now I'm ready to add my device, my master. So let's go ahead and add device. So I can either be a serial um, master or, or a slave. Okay, so now I can add my Modbus serial master. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that device. Okay, so that's been added. Close that. Um, let me double click on this, make sure I'm, I'm okay here. So my Modbus device, RTU 1010, let's see, use current bus setting, yeah. I don't think there's anything here for me to do. Yeah. So, okay, so now I'm gonna right click again here and I'm gonna add a device and this is gonna be my slave. So, here we are, Modbus serial slave. That's my only option. Okay. Add device. Give it a name, actually. Okay. Close this out, and now at my slave device, double click that, and let's go ahead and give it the settings here that it needs. So slave ID address. That's uh, always going to be a Modbus deal. So um, my ID is going to be eleven. And why is that? Because I have my rotary. You can't see them, I'm sorry. But uh, that's what I have my, my radio set up as um, on the rotary addresses. And so every radio has its own um, address. So that's how I know, slave ID address. So now I have to add a channel. So this is kind of where I do have to add a channel. And so this particular radio, if you're wondering, where am I getting all this, all this information? My inputs are gonna start at 40,001 and my outputs are gonna start at 501, okay? So with uh, with all of that being said now, what I'm gonna do is add my input channel. So I do have to add separate input and output channels. So I'm gonna have two inputs and outputs. And I can give this a name, um, I'm gonna call this Slave Radio 11. So for that, I'm gonna stay with the read uh, with function code three, and I'm gonna start actually at zero. Even though it starts at 40,001, uh, I did discover that there is an offset of one. So um, yeah, that's the thing about connecting Modbus devices. There's usually you either start at zero or you start at one. In this case, we're gonna actually start at zero, and we're, so we're just gonna have to remember to subtract one. Um, the length is going to be eight because that's how many holding registers I I have that are consecutive. So I'm just going to read them all in. I'm going to say okay, and then I'm going to add another channel for my outputs. So I'm going to call this one Slave Radio 11 Outputs. 
for my outputs, I'm actually going to use function code 16. And like I said, there's an offset of one. So instead of 501, where I would normally start for my first output, I'm actually going to start at 500. And then I'm going to have a length of just two because there's only two outputs that I can really play, play with. So click OK. Notice that it does come in as a hex. So you can write these as zero or 500 um, and it's gonna automatically change them to a hex value. Okay, I think that's it here. So it should just, uh, let's see what else. Oh, well, I guess I could name my tags. So this is where my tags are gonna be located. Um, input word 50. And that's where it gets allocated and then qw output word 50 as well there's my two so my first one i'm just going to name um, di1 and then di2 di3 di4 and then i actually have analog one analog input two analog input three analog input four it's three output and call it do9 because that's what or what banner labels at DL10 on the terminals. Um, all right, I think we're good now. So let's go ahead and log in up here. Oh no. Okay, so I'm having a little issue here downloading. And the reason is because there is a firmware mismatch. If you saw that error, a little earlier so if I if I just I think what we just need to do is double click here on device um, and go to update device here we go update device and if we just look for our project here what we and display all versions yeah that's what we need um, we're actually using service pack 14 so we need to tell it to use this one here this is my part number and that is the version it's asking me for. So I'll click update device, close that, and let's see if it'll scan my network, see if it'll actually connect now. Okay, we got a green light. Um, so let's log in and see if it'll let me. Oh, that's progress, so yes. I wanna download. Click the play button to start and notice I get green little circles here which means that I do have connection so if I double click on my slave let's look at the IO here the IO mapping I have I have values there so that means I am super good and if I um, enable this can you see that yellow light there turn on on my sensor that matches with my DI1. It's pretty fast too, pretty fast update rate. So very cool. So it works as far as communication goes. If I wanted to just take this a step further, I'm gonna log out here and create a quick little input to output program. I double click on PLC program here, move this out of the way, and I'll just insert um, an, a contact, normally open contact. If I double, if I click on the three dots there, it'll actually open up my, all of the tags that I created. So I'm currently, I have a sensor connected to DI1. So I'm gonna select that one as an input, and I'm just gonna connect it to an output here. So, now I'm going to add a coil for my output. So there's my coil, and I'm going to add my, I, have, I actually have a, um, a light connected to it. So, DO9. All right, so that right there should work. So when input one turns on, I should see my tower light turn on. So I'll log in, Go online change, okay the play button I always forget so I should see this live there, there's my one you see that one um, right. 
So my light, you can't see my light. Hold on. And now you should see my light turning on and my outfit turning on. Cool. So now you can go out. It's pretty simple, straightforward, but this is a great tool to do that. Um, hope you enjoyed the video and leave a comment and I'll see you on the next one.